Hey traders and welcome back to IFX Success. All right, so I want to show you that today I did four entries and the four entries were on pound dollar and pound yen and they were made by the VTA. We had a buy over here actually and I was able to get like 17 pips on this and then I had another buy in here. I was able to get like 11, 12 pips. Then I, I got a sell right over here, which I got like 25 pips because I got out like as soon as, uh, right now we got another sell entry, but I got out right over here when it hit the Bollinger Band on one hour and it kept on going lower. So it's okay. I missed some, some of that. I was, it was okay. And then I got another sell right here, which kind of was taking too long. Remember pound yen and pound dollar, they go, they usually go into the same direction. If you can tell, you know, the candles, they very much look alike. So I was hoping that this was, was going to just quickly go, go down and hit the uh, Bollinger, but it was taking too long. So I had like 10 pips and I just got out with five. And let me just show you right over here. So I started again, today's day one of the FTMO challenge. And I, this is the entries for today. They were all entries made by the VTA. I had um, just manual entries over here. You just ignore that. I was trying something out on the VTA. And these were all automatic entries. I will be trading four pairs this time. And I will only be trading the one hour charts, okay? looking at the four hour charts and obviously looking at the Bollinger's and the RSI and just looking what is the, uh, you know, market direction as an overall, you know, I just want to tell you that if you want to, the more pairs that you look at, you know, it's better that you actually look at the higher time frames because the margin of error, you know, is less than when you actually trade a higher time frame. you know, when you, when you, when you, um, trade like a five minute time frame you see a lot more noise and you're going to get, get a lot more entries. And then, you know, you have to really be quick on getting in and getting out. You know, you can't really think about this too much. So if you really want to trade a five minute or 15 minutes, you really want to go with the trend as a one hour trend or four hour trend and kind of follow those signals. But, you know, in five minutes or 15 minutes, again, the margin of error is way higher than when you're actually trading a one hour or an actual four hour uh, market so be very careful again I really actually right now I'm doing the FTMO challenge so I'm only gonna going to be trading the signals all of the signals that I get you know under the one hour on four pairs and I'm, I'm gonna be using the Bollinger Bands for one hour and four hours in here I'm gonna be using the RSI and that's pretty much it, you know, and, you know, just kind of see what is the overall trend on the market. Like, again, you're going to get entries, but you have to really filter them out. You know, if you get an entry, let's say in here, I got an entry, you would have gotten an entry right over here. And if you can tell, you know, based on RSI, you know, we kind of see that maybe it was going in a higher time frame, you know, was going more as an uptrend. And we over here, we have a... a another moving average and then that would have worked out as a support and then then we would have gotten another signal to buy and obviously this one was the one that actually worked out so you know you just kind of see you know what's really done you can follow every single entry you know just kind of see really you know get that feeling of the market and when you get that alert you know kind of see hey is this really a good alert or not you know i'm having as an automatic but I have to quickly see hey, is this good one or bad and then either let, let it be or get out very quickly with few minimal pips you know and stuff like that so that's pretty much it what i want to tell you i want to we're, we're going to go over the actual trades again you know they were all automatic entries based on all of these entries and and then that's it over here we would have gotten another entry for euro dollar but i kind of missed that one i was just setting up on the computer Another thing that you have to remember is this, there is no special time in the market. There are times that the market actually makes a nice move very early in the morning or very late in the afternoon. Remember, we have different sessions and there are times when the market just kind of you missed your boat and you just have to wait patiently for your time to enter again. Yesterday, I actually missed really nice trades but they happened while i was not trading so unfortunately there was nothing else i can do but just to wait and see 
um, just to kind of see what all the opportunities I would get. So please be patient. Don't be always seeking for traits that are not there just because you want to enter the market, just because you feel like you need to enter and it will be like a wasted day or hour of time that you're spending on the market. No, I mean, if there's no entry, then there's no entry and then that's it. You just kind of have to call it a day. Like here, this was the entry on yesterday, which happened at about seven o'clock empty for time. It was like more like a nine o'clock in the morning, my time. And you know, it run for one, two, three, four, five, six hours, all as an uptrend. And then I didn't really get a chance to sell. So, you know, if, if you see something like this, that you actually see a nice trend going, then, then this is the only chance where you can actually go on a lower time frame and look for a buy opportunity whether it's the five or 15 minutes because you are going with the trend. You want to wait for the market to retrace a little bit and keep on going higher. That is really the only way you want to trade five and 15 minutes. Again, um, so this is it. Um, let's go over some of the trades. I mean, like I said, you know, they're very simple. It's just really, I'm just going to show you, you know, the actual trades, but it's very simple. You know, the VTA saw this entry right here, gave me an entry. I got out quickly because I saw that we were going against the number three and the RSI was not going strong anymore. It was very weak on all time frames. So I just quickly got out, you know, very quickly with like 17 pips on that. And then eventually I waited for the sell entry. He gave, he gave it to me. And then this one was the one that worked out for most pips. I got out as soon as it hit this Bollinger, which 24 pips. And then I was happy with that. And then the same thing happened with Pound Yen, you know, like I said, they all work the same way. So that was really it uh, for today. We'll see how we go and do it tomorrow. So let's go over the trades. All right. So this are, this is the pound dollar right on top. And then the second one is Pound Yen. Here you can tell this is the entry and this is a number two entry. We are going against the number three, as you're able to tell. So that's why, you know, I was not going to hold that much longer because in order for it to actually break that number two, three, you know, it would just take too long. So uh, this was it, you know, I was able to get out with 17 pips on the pound dollar and like 12 pips on pound yen. And that was just, uh, you know, just a quick entry actually it didn't uh, take that long for, for it to work out. Okay, so as soon as I close that trade, that um, buy entry, then you can tell that we immediately got another entry to sell. And that's what it happened on pound dollar. It happened first on pound dollar, and then later you're going to see that it's going to give me an entry on pound yen for sell as well. So good thing I was able to get out on this trade uh, right away because then it would just turn around on me. Okay, so right there, uh, immediately gave me another entry on pound yen. So pound yen looks like today was just going uh, way uh, slower than pound dollar today. So I'm already five pips positive on pound dollar. And we just have to wait for pound yen to work out. And again, you know, we'll see how this trade develops. One of the things that I really want you to keep in mind is that when you see a candle going against you you know don't don't get scared about that if everything else you know you're putting your stop loss above the signal which you know number two signal just right above there then you know i need to give it time for the trade to work out you know this is why you know when you're trading smaller time frames then you know it's sometimes it does take it out right away and then it moves towards your direction where you were before and you know that's sometimes one of the bad things so in here, you're able to tell that, you know, we had a kind of green candle going up and then, but as long as it doesn't stop me out, then it's fine. Again, yes, I have to make sure a couple of things, you know, work my way. One, I have to make sure my RSI is going into the uh, red zones that, you know, is letting me know that, hey, this is going to push down more. The, uh, the other thing that I'm looking for is that, hey, I'm going with the number three signal uh, cycle. I'm going with that direction. So that's also giving me peace of mind that I can hold the street a little bit longer. But, you know, if I see that it's 
actually turn it around and you know but again you know we have to give it time for the trade to work out our way if you get scared by looking at a uh, candle going in the wrong direction then you know and you're gonna get out and then enter rapidly again on that direction then you're gonna lose two trades you can't be doing that okay so finally I was able to close the trade with like 21 pips I mean a little bit more you know I was waiting for it I have some support right there I have the Bollinger and then I have the number two again yes you can keep on going lower because my RSI is actually looking better now if you can tell we now is really red you know that's the good insight that hey this is going more into my zone of selling you know the same thing with pound yen I mean you don't see the RSI but it kind of looks a little bit you still have four hours still under the green zone you don't see it right now but I a pound yen was taking just way longer unfortunately I just closed it straight too early um, for both of them you know since if you see a trade and the RSI going in your direction you know don't be afraid you know just let it let it run for a little bit more so again I, I closed this trade with 25 pips on that you know that's okay and then this other trade on pound yen you know what's the one that's kind of giving me just taking too long and I was just a little bit fed up wanted to be done for the day and but I could have let it run you know it's still going both of them are still going in my direction uh, pound yen I had like 10 pips on that and then I just actually got out with five unfortunately but this is just really what I want to you know be able to teach you that one you know you're getting the signals already you're already getting something you know which now all you have to do is pretty much be an alert that when you get it or even if you miss out on a trade try not to enter on your own for now just kind of wait and see those entries that those alerts and then you can see where you can go in to get out or if that entry is actually a good entry or not but you already have halfway of the job done for you so all right traders so please just subscribe on the channel let me know if you have any questions let me know what what pairs are you trading and you know if you're using either the 10 pair challenge or you're using four or five you know again yes the more you, the more pairs that you put in the more responsibility that you have to actually filter those trades and stuff like that so right now i only picked four i'm doing the challenge and let's see how it goes all right traders i will see you and have a good one